the zombie thing. I haven't gone down the avenue really of zombies yet. No one wants to talk about them or believe it's a possibility. And it probably won't shock you if you're used to my articles that I have given an awful lot of thought to them. Watched many films about them, read books and had nightmares after those films when a child, and studied what I thought would occur if a real virus was discovered that tore through the population for one of my fictional books. And possibly, because of my fear of the concept, I wanted to learn how it could, or couldn't, occur. Along the way of my research, a new game came out on the phone around 2017 called Pandemic, a simulation game of creating and mutating pathogens to create the perfect virus. It took a number of attempts to get it right, starting in the right conditions, giving it the right environment to develop. At the same time, you had to beat a little blue bubble appearing around the world, signifying a vaccine being developed. When I did it, and the world was dead, it did not feel like a sense of achievement. Quite the opposite. My heart sank, because I then ran a simulation in my head, same game, but in real life, with real people, and wondered if perhaps these games were just data harvesting apps to have boots on the ground doing unknowing live research. It worried me. I stopped playing. But when the first whispers of pandemic started in January 2020, I paid very close attention, wanting to see any signs it was a real one, just in case. It seemed not, but what did occur was a shift in thought process for many. We have had many a movie thrown our way about the end of times, apocalypse, and angry, hungry zombies and viruses to sweep through and end humanity as we know it. Is it just from the imagination? Or is it part of a carefully constructed propaganda plan to create a psychological environment for a thought process to be harboured and accepted? Over decades being assimilated into the collective psyche? It's a possibility. I'll list the bulk of the movies that I have watched along the way as examples. There are many more, but I didn't need any more. My research was done. Return of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, 28 Days Later and 28 Weeks Later, Resident Evil Films, Train to Busan, World War Z, Shaun of the Dead. Comedy, but class. These films painting a horrifying portrayal of awfulness no one should really be spending their time thinking about. But it spawned a culture of planning, prepping and worrying. For some, of course, not all. It also creates a mental landscape where these things do become a reality in people's minds, reinforced by TV series and scenarios to be watched and thought through and discussed. The great distraction that is television and programming. But what are they programming people with and what for? One does wonder. Although it seems clear of late, the last thing you would want to do if you were trying to get rid of the population is create one that lives on even after death. What is going on will remain to be seen, but I will continue to consider it from all angles, however outrageous it may seem. We are living in outrageous times. The dead walk the earth. What if they knew something, that something happens and things as we know them now become different? Imagine if a veil were to cover the earth, bringing with it a different atmosphere, a tropical, misty composite enveloping the world around us. And within that, what if it also created an environment where the rules and laws of physics, nature and reality are not as we know them now? People in charge would start acting rather strangely if they knew, wouldn't they? Almost as if they might throw caution to the wind and do things that seemed outrageous and made no sense, if you didn't know. And on that premise of the laws of nature being suspended as we know them, I wondered, could this be why there are many tales, legends and myths about armies of the dead rising from the earth? I'll go on one of my wild speculations here, using the medium of movies to get my point across in brief. The Mummy The army of Anubis and of the mummy itself being reanimated under the right conditions. For that they chose spells and words, also seemingly quite powerful in this realm, but that crosses over into witchery, which may be another post. Lord of the Rings 3, The Return of the King. It never sat well with me, the ending of the third Lord of the Rings film. I didn't read the books. How it looked, all lost in battle. They were grossly outnumbered with evil about to take the land. Then right at the last minute, an army of the dead, bound by words again, swoop in and save everything. Ghostbusters, Afterlife. Interesting storyline for this one too, as with the originals. But an evil is coming, on a clock, 
a predicted time that comes round and brings something dark with it, also with the power to reanimate the dead as it gets to the surface. But that's just crazy talk, right? There's no way that could happen. Even though they have speculated through many a film about zombies, I cover a few of those in my post, The Zombie Thing, but those films always look at it from an infection point of view, that they die and become the undead. Not the same thing as dying, starting to decay and being reanimated, in my mind anyway. They paint a picture of some stumbling, rotting undead, hungry for brains and mayhem. But I've given it another thought from a different angle now. What if you weren't only reanimated, but you also regenerated, back to your former healthy self and would actually have a longer lifespan now? That would change the game slightly, wouldn't it? But like I said, that's just crazy talk and wild speculation. Would make a good short story though, so maybe I'll see what I can pull together from it while wondering where it all leads. Zombies? Perhaps. Prepped for it, exposed to the ideas of it, and potentially waiting for it. Gen X are the ones in line for this, I feel. And possibly quite a few of Gen Y as well. And I wondered why. Why the need to have it as a mainstream idea? They are not without uses, and this one has been carried forward like a security blanket. As if the idea of an outbreak leading to a zombie apocalypse has been so thought through and expected that it can't be let go of. And I'm sure the idea of it may seem silly to some who have not considered it. But to a certain group of people, or section of society should I say, I suspect they know precisely what I am talking about. I've already given a brief overview of my thought in the Zombie Thing article, and touched upon the idea of the dead coming back in The Dead Walk the Earth. But could it be that it was never meant to be that way? The idea of it was. People fear people. That's no secret. But the idea of people being turned or mutating into the very worst version of a human is one of our deepest fears, perhaps. The number of humanoid monsters and demons that are depicted in movies and films is like that for a reason. Because we can identify with it. However horrible it is. And that is what makes it even scarier, seeing part of you in it, and it in you. But what if they pre-program us to behave in that way when faced with what appears to be a similar scenario? There seems something familiar about it, so we do what makes us feel most comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. If we remember seeing someone else react in a certain way, even if only on the television, it is still a reference of experience or at least our brain may treat it as such. Two things spring to mind, even if only a loose connection to what I mean. Firstly, a Darren Brown trick in one of his TV series years ago, where a chap was playing a zombie video arcade game, and then he was hypnotised by Darren to think it was happening. Add in some actors and makeup, lighting and everyone else playing along, and he thought it was real. Even without being hypnotised, just having actors, makeup and scenery can do the job of tricking our mind into believing that is in our reality at that moment. We have two processing centres in our brain, they say, called the primary processing centre, which obviously acts as the first response, followed by the secondary processing system, which then takes over after the initial reaction to review it and make sure it was appropriate. But as we know, in a split second, life or death decision-making situation, you will have to rely on the primary response center. Whatever information it is accessing for that moment is what you will have to go with. So if you don't have very good reasoning skills or reactions on the spot, you will fail. No pressure or anything. The second thing that came to mind in two parts, or rather two things rolled into one, a company started doing zombie simulation games where you had an area, actors pretending to be zombies and the thrill ride of pretending the outbreak was happening but in the safety of a big comfort zone. The other tie-in being the film The Fifth Element, whereby they fool children into thinking there are aliens, infected ones that have to be killed, but really they are other humans. We appear to have a bulk of crisis actors across the board today 
And although it might seem far-fetched to think we could actually have a zombie virus outbreak, I sure as hell believe they could easily fake one, as has been done with so many other situations, scenarios and events. But that does not mean to say the time was wasted or misspent. There may well be a time coming where we have to consider if our fellow man is really so, and that something dark does indeed lurk and dwell in this realm. You never know when there may come a time for all that training and thought to be put to good use. Not quite in control. I saw a post about people lining up for a number of jabs in very short succession for various illnesses they now seem to have cures for by way of constant injections. Although lots of people keep getting sick, so are they really cures? This is one of the burning questions going around the block at the moment. Some would rather ignore it and pretend there is nothing to question, which makes me think they either don't understand what is going on, or aren't able to formulate a comprehensive discussion, argument, or opposing opinion they can back up. But what seems to be of note to people is how strange it is that many seem to be repeatedly handing themselves over to constant medical procedures on the say-so of a faceless corporation, with no personal risk assessment being done at all. Even just to look at what the ingredients are of all those medications, and how it may affect your system, or not. Or if the drugs react with each other, or not. Crazy that many people don't even think of these things, despite the fact we have had pharmaceuticals around for so long, People seem to have thrown caution to the wind and gone with blind trust. We'll see how that works out in the end if that is the case. It dawned on me though, that maybe that isn't entirely the case. That it again serves a purpose for them, for us to just write off the sheep who appear to be handing themselves over for sacrifice, predicting perhaps that we will leave some behind thinking they will hold us back. And they did it to themselves anyway, justifying why it's okay to leave them. But what if it wasn't entirely of their own free will and they weren't just willingly handing themselves over for a life of control? I thought of the cuckoo wasp again and of other species, ones that use parasites to achieve their goal. It's not pretty to watch, but there are insects that infect their host, get into their nervous system and start to control them. They call them zombie insects because the insect appears to be going about its daily life mostly normal on the outside and going through the motions, but it's being forced to perform those duties, hosting the parasite via an insect, often by way of a certain wasp or fungi. If you watch any of the insect videos of it, it's quite hideous, but got me thinking. Not by accident, of course. We have movies such as Invasion of the Body Snatchers and many a storyline about us being a host for something. Not like us speculated on that idea a bit, but what if they had been infected with something, which makes them line up, march towards doom with intent, because they are not themselves anymore, in that instance, controlled by something else which will lead you to your demise, so it can thrive. So whether it's a mental or physical affliction, who can say for sure? And whether it's just for control or monetary gain, who can say for sure? But many people can feel a dark undercurrent beneath the very sinister overcurrent. And as I always say, all options are being considered here. Gen Z. You hear talk of the categories the last few generations have been put into. Boomers, Gen X, Millennials, and now Gen Z. In fact, people too happily put themselves into the category sometimes, finding it gives them a sense of being in a certain time, perhaps, or a generation they can identify with, discussed briefly in A Lost Generation. But I can't help wonder about it from other angles, in my usual way. A wild theory was put out there recently, that they have added a third strand to the standard double helix structure of the human makeup that was speculated upon in the grand scheme of symbolising ceremonies that was made public. So have they added X and Y to bring Z into our composition? Generation Zombie. Suddenly the idea of Gen Z not sounding so cool. And maybe it isn't the zombie apocalypse we thought it would be, where they become the real undead and want for brains. 
although ironically that does still kind of fit. Instead, they become the drug-addicted half-dead, wanting more of the chemicals and entertainment being dispensed and drip-fed to them from above. Or perhaps it is the other original meaning, a willless and speechless human, as is said in voodoo folklore and fictional works. Not quite so yet, because although free speech may be under attack in the online forum, there is no shortage of people who have something to say, on both sides, myself included. And for now, technology permits us to be able to share, save and reproduce those words, thoughts and ideas on various mediums almost instantaneously. But are we really talking from a place of free speech anyway? There are those who say we lack free will already. So whose words and ideas are we talking here? Have they been planted within us through various forms? My articles, films, real life twisted or just fantasy, and planting the seeds. Look at that a bit and I've also written a few on the zombie topic before. The zombie thing, zombies perhaps, and not quite in control, if you are interested in further ones on that. But it does seem that something is changing with people, society, and what we know as being human. Changing into what exactly touched upon it. But as it continues and they talk of putting chips in our brains, assisted suicide, a virtual metaverse, smart cities, and various other changes to what we are and how we live, it's no wonder many people aren't happy. Because those things do not ultimately benefit the masses and is not meant for the betterment of the little people. It's for the entrapment and containment of them, in the most efficient and hassle-free way, for them. And while I point out the difference between us and them, I am aware that they wouldn't be them unless they were allowed to become so. We know certain things are bad and line corporations' pockets, but we do it anyway. We eat the sugar-laden foods, we drink the fizzy pop, we take the medications, like good little Eloy. Because while the book The Time Machine looked at the far future and how things had become split between Morlocks and the Eloi, who were just being bred and fed for the ultimate purpose of being food, I realised maybe that's where we are now, and it's not in the future at all. That's where the story tricked us. It is now, and the Morlocks work very hard with their underground world to make things appear as they need to, so that the above-ground Eloi will just go about their daily lives, laughing, eating, not worrying about a thing until they are told to, hypnotised by a siren when it is their time to step forward. Sound kind of familiar? Maybe it's just me that sees it that way. <laughs>